So you've been working on a decorative element that has a split down the middle of it, but it's closed on both ends and somehow you need to get in there and clean up that final little bit of the split, which would be really hard to do with a chisel coming down from the top because you can't get it right over where you want it. Perhaps the solution then is a side chisel or a hack that will fit inside that split. So our project for today is to make a side chisel. I think I see a piece of leaf spring sticking up out of the snow. That'll be the ideal material for this. Today's video is sponsored by Blacksmith Supply. You can certainly make it out of something like S7 or H13 if you really want a good hot work tool. The leaf spring material is typically 5160 and it should perform just fine for this. I'm going to go ahead and cut this with an angle grinder since it's still hardened. The abrasive blade on the angle grinder will cut right through that. And I'm going to use that original hole as a stress relief point for the transition between the handle and the blade. And I'm going to grind that sharp corner back to make sure that doesn't fold over and become a cold shut. First thing I'm going to do then is go ahead and shape the handle and get it the way I want it. I'm not really trying to draw this out. I would rather make it thicker in the cross section so it's a more comfortable handle to hold on to. There's nothing special about the handle, it's just whatever you feel is comfortable. I suppose you could put a tang on this and put a wooden handle on if you really wanted to. I'm going to go ahead and put my touch mark in the handle and while I'm at it I'm going to stamp it 5160 so I know how to treat it. Now 5160 is just an educated guess. Some leaf springs are a little bit different. I'm going to start this by just lightly upsetting and rounding over the back to make a better striking surface.
that's all the forging this really needs. It's really a rather simple tool. I'm going to put this back in the gas forge, bring it up to a nice red heat. Then I'll let this cool at the forge to give it a good de-stressing. At that point, it'll be ready to grind. Then it'll be on to hardening and tempering. Well, that cools. I'd like to thank Blacksmith Supply for sponsoring today's video. Blacksmith Supply is home of the Smith & Magician, lots of other tools for blacksmiths. Matter of fact, they carry a version of this tool that's meant to be a power hammer hack or a cutoff for the power hammer, but it's a very similar tool made out of H13. I frequently get asked where I got these really nice little scrolling pliers. I think technically they're called electrician's pliers. And Blacksmith Supply has these in stock. They're also the new home of Old World Anvils, fly presses, and, well, anvils, along with some other excellent anvils. But just about anything you need for blacksmithing, you can find at Blacksmith Supply. If you use the link in the video description and the coupon code BEAR5, you can get 5% off your next order. Anything but treadle hammers. I think I'm going to go ahead and harden this in the forge just because it'll be a little bit quicker. It is ideal to take longer and do it in the electronic oven so you can get a nice long soak time and good even heat. But it's a fairly thin cross section and since most people don't have an electronic heat treat oven, this might be all they have available. I'm going to periodically turn the gas forge off so this can have a little bit more of a soak time and guarantee that more even heat. Remember to preheat your quenching oil. I'm not quenching this area right here at the transition. I don't want to create a stress point, but I am keeping it moving through this area. Once that gets down to a black heat, I can quench that. Then I'm going to go ahead and put this in the toaster oven at 450 for an hour. That'll give me time for a lunch break. And we'll come back and draw the temper on the back or the struck area just a little bit more. I've done a quick cleanup to get all the scale off of this so I can see some temper colors run. I'm perfectly happy with the 450 from the toaster oven from the cutting edge, but I want the struck edge and back here where this transition is to be tempered just a little bit further to make sure that I don't chip it or worse, crack it right here, which is a real possibility. To do that, I got this block nice and hot and I'll just set this on there. This will probably take a few minutes. It doesn't need to be tempered way back, and I don't want the colors to run clear into the cutting edge. That'll get soft in use working in hot material anyways. I don't know if you can see that starting to turn a little bit straw colored. I want to go to at least bronze on the back, maybe start getting into the peacock range. It's better for it to mushroom a little bit in use than to chip. So that's a look at making a side chisel, sometimes it's called a hack, although usually when it's referred to as a hack, it's more for cutting material off under a power hammer or a treadle hammer, and they're usually not quite this tall. But for what I'm going to use this for, working at the vise to clean up splits, I think this is going to work out just fine. 
As I mentioned earlier, you can use S7, H13, whatever you want for something like this, and those materials will probably hold up better. But most of us have some old leaf spring laying around, so I thought I would try that. And so far, I think it's going to be just fine. Now as far as this piece goes, I just needed something to demonstrate how a side chisel worked. So if you've got an idea of what I ought to use this for, put it down in the comments section. This may just sit around for years as a sample piece, but maybe we can find an upcoming project to use it in. Hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.